Hi everyone, it's Brett. So a long time ago, probably at least over a decade ago, I deleted my older brother's save file on Super Mario 64 that had 120 stars. I'm not entirely sure what I was thinking, and I regret it. I was told by my brother I had to get them all back. I have still unfulfilled his wish. However, now I'm going to go back to finally get those stars I deleted. I believe that I collected some way back then. Oh brother, only three stars? Well, only 117 more to go. I need to clear something up first. I have got 120 stars on my file. I can't copy my file onto his file. There's no honor in that. I have to earn these stars on his file, just like he did. All right then, while I collect some stars and contemplate what I have done, I think I'll reminisce, give my thoughts on this game as I play through it again, and I'll go somewhat fast since my brother has been waiting a while. Anyway, I just want to stop and appreciate the ambience of the beginning area. It's really nice that there are some birds chirping and waterfall noises in the background. It's peaceful and invites the player to mess around with Mario's moveset. However, since I already know the moveset, I'm just going to go into the castle and get some stars. I went to bob -omb Battlefield first, so I suppose I already got the first star a while ago. Sounds good to me, Koopa the Quick is up next. This will be a great test to see if I still got it. I think the movement is as fun as I remember. Winning the race was pretty easy, although I forgot that going to the very top of the flagpole doesn't finish the race. The race was closer than I would have liked, but either way, that's one star down. I'll go ahead and get the Chain Chomp star, and this is not going well. I think I have lost some of my skill. I should heal. I'll be right back. Alright, finally got through that. I think that bob on Battlefield is a good starting level and just a good level in general. The path at the start of the level is a nice guide and is a nice part of the environment. There are also fun areas to explore outside of the path. The level is a balanced size, and I really like the sloped hills that act as a border for a lot of the level. Anyway, I was going for the 100 coin and 8 red coin stars at the same time, only to realize later that to easily get the rest of the 100 coins, I would need the wing cap. Needless to say, this was kind of devastating. I also realized I would need the wing cap to fly around to get the last star. So, my hopes of getting all the stars in this level in a row have been thrown in the trash. This is not going to help out with my completion time. Now there might be a way for me to get the coins I need by just shooting out of the cannon a bunch. That would take forever, so I'm moving on to the winter level. What was that one called again? I think it was... Cool Cool Mountain. I find it funny that some random message tells you to go to the cottage first. The cottage leads Mario to probably one of the most dangerous parts of the level. Falling off can be easy. This is one of the death slides in the game, because if you fall off, you probably die. This slide is very fun other than that. There's a shortcut that is a nice addition because I can get to the star faster. So easy star right there. Turns out I can fight Bowser now. However, I am focused on getting all the stars, so I'm going back into the winter level. I gotta get the correct penguin back to its parents to get the next star. I really like the sliding gameplay and it makes getting down to the mountain extra fun. Movement slows down when holding this guy, which makes the star interesting. I don't really know why this guy had to constantly whine though. Why would somebody have a problem with a plumber taking them back to their parent? Anyway, the next star has you racing this guy and I do remember dying on this star. It seems like things did not change. This is why I consider this a dangerous part of the level. It did not take long for me to make a pretty great play and move on to the rest of the stars. So my goal has been to get the 100 coin and 8 red coin stars in one go, but I don't want to fall off a cliff and lose progress on both. Nevertheless, I'm going to get that 100 coin and 8 red coin star combo eventually. Cool Cool Mountain is still a stage I like, and it's pretty fun. Being able to slide outside and inside the mountain is pretty cool. It's fun that this stage is about descending the mountain, whereas bob on Battlefield had the player going up a mountain. I think there are quite a lot of ways to fall off, which is what makes the 100 coin star more difficult. However, this is the fourth course, so the difficulty isn't unwarranted. I only went here first because it was closest to bob on Battlefield. I'd say the last star is the most challenging. There's a cannon shot, then after some flower enemies, there is this next section. Giving this section some more thought, I think it would have been nice to place a checkpoint here, because the game wants you to do a long jump over a cliff. This can be a lethal long jump. Maybe having some kind of ground below the jump would have been nice, so you don't have to do the start of the star again for missing the jump. Wall kicking to the star was tough back then, but now it only causes me minor problems. Well, that's all those stars, and it turns out the light has shone. The gateway to the wing cap has been revealed! I would have liked to unlock the wing cap earlier to get those other stars from bob -omb Battlefield. 
Trying to get the star on this level is a precise task, and I didn't like getting it back then, and I still don't like it now. I somehow exited the level, and the wing cap died on me. The first thing didn't make sense to me, but I wish the wing cap lasted longer. So I pushed the wing cap switch and got the rest of the coins. This is a really fun spot to fly around, especially if I try to forget that I had to redo the red coin collecting. For what it's worth, it can be fun getting the red coins. Bob on Battlefield can wait. I'm going to Womp's Fortress. So this is where I got another star way back in the past. The second star requires the player to go to the top of the level again. Nothing new going to the top, however, instead of there being a boss battle at the top, there is a tower and other things. I like the small platforming section, although going through most of the same path is a bit bland. I still like the level itself and all the little challenges can be pretty fun. I finally completed the 100 coin and 8 red coin stars at the same time! Now that is what I call efficiency. The last star for this course was one I remember being obtuse. The hint is called Blast Away the Wall. This hints at the idea of using the cannon. The next step would be to blast the wall. Too bad there's tons of spots to shoot at walls. I would have liked there to be a crack in the part of the wall that needs to be hit, or instead the hint saying corner wall instead of just wall. I watched my older brother try to figure it out a long time ago and I don't remember if he figured it out, looked it up online, or whatever, although I don't remember pointing out the correct spot to shoot either. I'm headed to the slide level. This is a nice simple track where there are two stars to collect. I got the star where I had to go fast first try. Turns out I seem to have collected the regular star, which makes up for the last of the three stars that I have already completed a long time ago. I'm headed to bob on Battlefield again to finish a job. Well, two jobs. I know quite a bit about this game, but I do not remember being able to do this. Okay, back to work. Blasting off with the wing cap can be fun. Getting the middle coins can be tricky. There is some bad pop-in for these coins, so that is a problem. I didn't really notice this when I was younger, or maybe my memory is bad. Now that I unlocked the star, the 100 coin star is next. Is getting the 100 coin star right next to the chain chomp a bad idea? Well, of course it is, but I want to see what happens. <laughs> This was tougher than I was expecting. I got it with somewhat obscured vision. Good to know Mario still has invincibility when getting a star. All right, now I can move on to the Bowser level, because if I went to Jolly Roger Bay right now, I would end up having to go through the level again due to needing the metal cap, and I already went back to bob on Battlefield because I didn't have the wing cap, and that is not happening again. I know there is some way to get the last star without the metal cap, but I don't want to spend who knows how long trying to do that trick. This is about being fast and playing it safe. Bowser in the Dark World is a simple, fun, and straightforward level. Also, it gives a nice little difficulty boost for the red coins. I was more fearful that I would fall off a cliff and have to get the coins again. Which didn't happen. I fell off a cliff before I even got a red coin. Well, I got the star in a good amount of time. This Bowser fight is pretty easy. Spinning Bowser around is just another part of this game that is enjoyable. The spike bomb hitboxes are pretty generous. Okay, not that generous. The Bowser Blast never gets old. Got the key, use the key. There's Toad! I thought he was gonna give me a star. At least Toad is being pretty transparent with me. The bunny can be a quick and satisfying star, or a long and devastating one. I don't need to say what category I was in because I barely missed him many times. I'm glad it's over, but sadly, he's coming back later. If Super Mario 64 has taught me anything, it would be wall equals desert. Shifting Sandland is mostly pretty linear, but has some interesting locations like this place with these cube enemies. It's fun to jump to other paths. Anyway, I have to get a star from this bird. And wow, I got that star pretty smoothly. Getting the shell makes it easy to skip some of the level. However, I am not going up the pyramid for the star with the shell because I want to get it the way I remember getting it. Oh, and the way I remember my brother getting it. I find it neat going up the pyramid, but I can't say I like the fire shooting enemies. Pulling a stunt like this is making my star collection speed slow down. I could probably make up for it. Star number four, stand tall on the four pillars. All right, I'm not standing tall on the four pillars. I'm doing it a different way, which is tradition, or at least I think it is. I don't think I knew of standing on the pillars because I don't think I bothered reading the star hint back then. I think my older brother started the tradition, but I really can't quite remember. So I just need to get in that square opening. I think I can just jump up there and it turns out I can't. I kind of forgot exactly how to do this. Okay, I remember now. I need to jump from above. I never said this was a good tradition. All right, I made it in more than one attempt. 
The boss that proceeds afterwards is creative and decently fun. I can go to Bowser, but not right now because I have work to do. I'm going to drain the water in the castle now. Having to ground pound these pillars seems sort of vague, however, there turns out to be a sign right next to them that pretty much tells the player what to do. The game told me earlier about doing this when I got 30 stars. I also noticed plenty of other signs explaining how to do moves and whatever else. I think this was a really good thing to have back then when 3D spaces were very foreign for people. Back then, I liked to ignore the messages. After draining the water, the invisible cap stage is available. Unlocking the invisible cap itself isn't too difficult, except for the moving platforms at the end. Getting the 8 red coin star is where the problem happens. I liked the slide sections before, but this section uses the sliding mechanic and places the red coins below. This means if you miss a platform, the red coin practically becomes inaccessible. Except for this part, the rest of the level is fine in my opinion. This was the Toad Star I was looking for. Super Mario 64 also taught me that mysterious metallic looking liquid takes you to a cave maze. Swimming beast in the cavern. That sounds like a boss fight. It's actually just a friendly beast that helps Mario get to the star. Fun idea for a star. Oh no. Not again. I made too many consecutive mistakes. I've played this game since I was a kid and I let this happen to me? Anyway, I have to get the metal cap if I want to get the third star. Mysterious metallic looking liquid also takes you to the metal cap switch course. I really like this course. It's short, but fun. Shows off what the metal cap can do. It's laid out very nicely. Whoa, I just learned that Mario can hang on the switch. Anyway, I really like the shiny and metallic look of the crystals, as well as the shape of them. The course has a nice look overall. The red coin star is interesting and does a nice job showing the power of the metal cap, which will keep Mario from going down the stream. It's neat that the water stream takes Mario down to the waterfall to the left of Peach's castle, but I didn't go that way because I have stars to collect. Anyway, back to the other star. The metal cap part isn't really the challenge. Getting over these gaps is the challenge. I remember doing wall jumps and I think my brother did too. I'm not keeping this tradition because I'm afraid I won't get it first try. I'm pretty sure long jumps are what the developers intended. I don't think I was aware of the long jump back then. I like how different this course feels with the enclosed spaces. It can get confusing and the section that feels the most like a maze is still a guessing game for me though. It seems like the last star is the fastest and maybe the hardest one to find. I find it hard to know if that's the case though, because I've been aware of the location for such a long time. Lethal Lava Land is where I'm going next. Probably one of the least cohesive levels when it comes to the environment. It's like random pieces were used and copied throughout the level sometimes. It's a somewhat interesting layout, and it's fun to skip some of it. The bully boss here is a creative fight. Push him into the lava and get a star. For the second star, there is another arena, three bullies, and after them, a bully boss. When this guy is copy and pasted, it's not as creative of a fight anymore. Well, one star includes a log hovering over lava, which makes no sense being here, and the next star includes a volcano, which makes the most sense being here. The first volcano star has a fun path up the volcano, with different obstacles thrown at you. I like this star. The second volcano star has a slow platform at the beginning, and a somewhat tricky jump, and that's about it. This is a shorter star, but I missed the tricky jump more times than I would have liked, and I had to do the slow part multiple times. In other words, this can be a long star. The game is telling me I have enough stars to open up the door on the third floor. That's great, but I haven't got the key to the second floor. Sounds like it's time to take out Bowser again, but I had to catch this bunny again first. Looks like I forgot I have to go to Dire Dire Docks first. Got the star on the submarine, then went for the red coins in the Bowser level, but died. Then I went back to the previous level to complete it, but I forgot I can't get all the stars until Bowser is defeated. So I want that red coin that the bully denied me from having. Well, didn't think that would happen, but I can't be blamed for the casualty. The red coins were put in trickier spots than the last Bowser course. There were some pretty creative spots for these. The developers did good work here. Got another star, so now it's time to go into the cool looking funnel. Bowser tipping the stage is a fun move in my opinion. It is also my opinion that Bowser's teleport ability is annoying, and because of this, he doesn't even attack Mario that much, but he's psychologically attacking me a lot because this is kind of absurd. Okay, maybe he wouldn't teleport as much if I wasn't that aggressive, but I don't have time to figure that out. I have a job to do. I got the key and will proceed not to use it right now. Going back to Dire Dire Docks again, a notable thing that happened to me was almost getting 100 coins and then getting pulled out of the level against my will, which reset my coin count. I don't like this. I went back to get the 100 coin and 8 red coin stars as I was trying to do before. I don't want to think about how much time I lost because of that. Also, the game didn't count me going through this ring. 
this course didn't go too great. All right, might as well do another water level. Now that I have the metal cap, Jolly Roger Bay can be completed all at once. I like the starting area. The shore section is a good way to start off the level. There's some nice variety in the course. First star is at the sunken ship. I don't think that was intended. This first star is kind of convoluted. The eel has to leave, but hovering around him doesn't seem to do anything sometimes. From my experience, he leaves eventually. Hard to judge because I can't tell how random it is. I can judge the inside of the ship because I died because I couldn't remember the chest order. The game doesn't give much of any hints that I am aware of on the chest opening order. I like Super Mario 64 a lot. However, I'd call this bad game design. I figured it out, and because of dying before, I am going to skip this platforming section. From what I remember, it was a nice little platforming section. Probably should be skipping it anyway because of trying to go quick, but whatever. For the other chest star, I was able to remember correctly first try. Great! When Mario is suffocating, I can't remember, but when Mario is not in lethal danger, I can remember like no problem. The signs are usually helpful, but the sign hints at giving a hint and then says nothing useful. I am confused. Anyway, another 100 coin and a red coin star are collected back to back. Now finally I can get the 6th star, the only reason I waited to play this course. Alright, I made good time there. It's a good time to go in the dark hole in the wall. This secret star was a ton easier now than what I used to think it was back then. Big Boo Haunt is up next. This mansion level is similar to Peach's Castle with all the doors and rooms. Very unique course from the others and makes for some fun stars. The first star is a ghost hunt. Ground pounding and whatever else to take out booze is a fun and perplexing activity. I feel like physically kicking a ghost probably shouldn't work. I really like the touch of unlocking the next floor to the mansion at the end of the star. There's a book room which is neat. There's also a random combination book puzzle. That's not as neat. Wow, I got 70 stars. The endless stair mystery was over before I got there. Worked on getting the 100 coin and 8 red coin stars again. Sorry Big Boo, hunting coins instead of ghosts right now. Got both in one go. Hasn't gotten old. Alright, I'm back. Big Boo's balcony proves to be a bit of a challenge, but the real challenge is getting to the star. I get to pull off some crazy maneuvers. This is going to be action packed. Hold on, I need to focus. I think I slammed the brakes on the action. That's got to be one of the most nerve-wracking stars because I really did not want to fall to the bottom. Now it's a great time to open up the stair doors with the key that I got from Bowser. First up is Wet Dry World. I did not realize until way later that going into the picture at different heights changes the water level. Would have been nice to learn of this sooner so I would have more time to appreciate this feature. My memory makes me feel like this is the first star of the level. It's not though. Being able to change the water level in the course is a cool concept, and it's nice to see that some stars utilize different water levels. There's an extra part to this course that's referred to as downtown. You can get there by cannon or jumping out of the water to get over this cage. You have to swim through a ton of water after that. This place is kind of bleak and devoid of civilized life. There's this little known trick that I discovered where it is possible to ground pound this box and have a star appear after breaking it. It only works if you are very close to having 100 coins. I like that the red coins have me jumping onto the buildings to collect them, but it does surprise me how precise it seems to be to get onto the buildings. The last star has Mario running with a time limit downtown. Could be frustrating if you have to walk back due to starting over, but the challenge itself is decently fun. So I went over to this toad thinking that he had a star, but he didn't, so I said, Sorry, I thought you were somebody else. Then I told the guy I was looking for that there was some other guy I just talked to that looked just like him. Then I got into a fight with this guy that looks like Mario. So if there's anything else that I've learned from Super Mario 64, it would be that a wall can also lead you to a snowy land. The first star of Snowman's Land is on top of a snowman. It's a pretty simple journey to the top until the snowman blows Mario away and Mario loses his hat. I fear of losing this thing. The penguin is the key to getting through this last section. It's kind of difficult to stay by his side, so I usually stand on his head. Some confusing stuff was happening, so this star proved to be more challenging. I didn't know I could hang off this guy like a ledge. I died in an embarrassing way to this guy. It's alright though, because I believe I settled the score. So I got the third star in a round. Wait for it. Ten seconds. That has to be my quickest star. 
I don't think I'm figuring out how long my slowest star took though. The last star is in the igloo. The layout here seems okay, though I feel like this section isn't that interesting due to the ice walls being pretty easy to navigate around. Although I like how I need to jump to get to the vanish cap. I like the concept of this area. Getting the star is pretty simple. I'm going to scale the tall tall mountain. I think this is a fun mountain to scale. It has different ways to go and some very challenges. Nice first star. The next star is the same destination, but this time with an additional step of catching a monkey. Which is too bad because I've been trying to catch him for over a minute. Yes! Wait! No! So you won't give me the star now? Well, if you can't give me what I want anymore, then I'm taking you with me. Well, I got the guy a lot quicker this time and was able to avoid a tragedy. The monkey should have just got me the star out last time. The mysterious mountainside star could be tough to find. I've known about this warp for a long time, so it's hard to say how hard it is to spot. Moving on, the slide for the star is really cool. I like the colors used and the background. I find the extra challenge to be fun and dynamic. When I was younger, this slide was much tougher, so it's satisfying to complete at first try. The last star is kind of obscure. The bob -omb buddy that unlocks the cannon is pretty hidden and then there's getting to the cannon. There are different ways to do it and ways to fall to my death. Shot to the star first try though, so that will save me some time. Tiny Huge Island is my next stop. I really like the concept of having a big island and a small one to swap between. I went to the big island to start off and that might have been the worst thing I could have done. I went all the way around the course when I could have just gone to the small version and got to the star a ton quicker. Anyway, there's big piranha plants, so that fits the course theme. The next race with Koopa the Quick takes place on the big island. The race is shorter and has a tighter amount of time to beat him in. I think this is a fine enough star. I kind of feel like there is usually less of a reason to go to the big world first. I went to the tiny world to start a bunch after the first star. I don't like that there is a pit in the red coin star area. I don't want to fall down there. I like that the red coin star is right below the boss arena. It's cool to see the course connected like this. I think the layout and platforming challenges are done well here. The last star where the wiggler has to be fought kind of makes me feel a little bad. I actually have bothered to read what was going on. To get into the arena, I had to ruin the ceiling and get the floor wet. The wiggler didn't like this because he calls the arena his house. Then he gets mad and is letting out his anger and I just stomp on him. I'm doing this to get out of debt though, so it's probably okay. He gives up the star and is really nice about it, even though I stomped on him three times. Then he falls through his floor. This has to be the most simultaneously tragic and funny thing that happens in this game. Now is a good time to get this door open and hop on into Tick Tock Clock. This course has to be one of the trickiest with all the obstacles. I really wish I did that to prove my point. Alright, so this first star has an interesting path to go through with these things that might be found in a clock. I would definitely not count the rotating squares though. Anyway, this is a well-made star. Sadly, the course uses the same general path most of the time. I gotta give credit to the developers for making a more vertical level though. Of course, falling down means all progress in the course could be lost. Even though the path is pretty linear, going in the clock at the start with different hand locations can change how things move. It can be faster, it can be slower, it can just lose its normal functionality, and it can stop. This helps the general path some with its variety. I thought that getting to the thwomp was the last star. I probably thought that because the star is at the top of the level. Getting to the top can be pretty challenging. Checkpoints would really help prevent this from becoming frustrating when falling down. The path to the thwomp is interesting and fun for the most part. There's a clock hand ride that takes a really long time. There's another one that is for a previous star and I had to do that more than once. It can be sped up when entering a level, but it could be faster for the default speed. Other than that, I think that the clock hands are an interesting thing to include. Oh yeah, the Thwomp Star ending is a cool challenge that really incorporates the concept of timing the jump. The timed jumps on the moving bars only exclusive challenge is pretty much three moving bars. I got a first try, but I'm pretty sure I exceeded that number back then. Stop time for the eight red coins because it would have been a nightmare jumping on these things while they were spinning. The 100 coin star seems easier with everything stopped too. Cool to see the eight red coin star being placed higher above the ground. Well now it's time for one of the most difficult and time consuming stages, where for me, morale usually dips pretty low when a mistake is made. It's called Rainbow Ride. 
Writing rainbows on carpets is a common theme here. It's kind of slow with these sections, and falling off the level means you will have to go at the same pace all over again. I'm going to say this again. Checkpoints would really help prevent this from becoming frustrating when falling down. Here's proof that I am still playing this game somewhat fast. I don't see myself missing that beginning carpet section. So this is probably the worst thing that has happened when working on paying off my debt. Mario just kind of fell off and I was so close to the star. Now I have to do this very long carpet section again. I lost a lot of time and morale because of this setback. I was able to get coins for the 100 coin star without falling off the level, thankfully. I went to the fun maze looking section to collect the red coins and made both stars spawn with one red coin. Never gets old. I like some of the stars a fair bit. Some of them have no focus on carpets, just challenging and fun platforming sections. The triangle platform star is enjoyable because it can lead to some wacky moments which were amusing. The problem that this level faces similar to TikTok clock is that the same linear paths are reused. The other earlier levels reused the same spaces too, but the difference is the amount of space there was to get around, which gave the player a lot more freedom. Anyway, the last star for Rainbow Ride has you go back to the ship, which is where the first star was, but this time using a cannon. Which has to be opened by a bob on buddy. The nice thing is, is that there is a ring that guides you when you are shooting to the floating island. Then I avoided some enemy that throws Mario off the cliff when getting the star. Glad that's over. On the opposite side of the Rainbow Ride entrance is the Cloudy Sky Red Coin level, or whatever it's called. I think that this is a cool level that does a good job with utilizing the wing cap's ability. Flying cloud to cloud is satisfying. Oh, I think there might be a coin here. Nope, I've been tricked by a fake cloud platform. How did I forget about that? When falling out of the level, it takes Mario back to the outside of the castle. I like connecting the world like that, but I'd say it's not worth it because I have to go back up to the top of the castle afterwards. Other than that part, I like the level. I remember for certain that this toad has a star. That's number 119. Time to go over to the final Bowser level. All right, the final challenge. All I have to do is get the 120th star and beat Bowser because my brother did both things. Anyway, this is a pretty good final level with a lot of varied challenges. There's a super hidden red coin that I easily remembered because of it being so much more obscure than the other ones. The platform under it could have been bigger or something. Looks like I missed a red coin. Where did it go? Now Mario's burning? Oh no. Turns out I forgot the red coin at the start. All right, there's the last red coin. There it is, the 120th star. I did it. Now it's time to deal with Bowser. I really enjoy this fight. The look of it, the music, Bowser's attacks. Okay, ouch, maybe not his attacks. Okay, I have to do a Bowser blast three times. I completely missed that. There's one. Well, okay, that was short. There's two. I just have to do it one more time. Okay, I can do this. I can do this. I can completely miss. All right, I need another try. All right, I can do this. I can do this. Thank you developers for giant hitboxes. Bowser has now confirmed the 120 stars and there it is, the biggest fake star there is. That one is not going on the star counter. Well, I have completed my job. My brother's file has now been restored to its original state. I'm glad I finished the job and I had fun doing it. I went for a somewhat quick pace. That didn't always work out for me all the time though. I had deaths that cost me a lot of time and I wouldn't go the most optimal way for a star sometimes. Also, I stopped playing for periods of time, but at least it was satisfying to see the star count go up on the file select screen as I got back on. Other than that, I think I went pretty fast and I think that is a personal Super Mario 64 120 star record. Wait a second, I started this playthrough around a decade ago. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I have finally paid off my debt. Hopefully he isn't going to charge interest on these stars.